Hello, critics, non-critics, and friends. Welcome to the Film Optics Podcast, where we take a glance into comic book movies, blockbusters, indie films, and everything in between. I'm your host, Christian, and I'm here with my co-host, Devin, and two special guests joining us here today. We have Amy Smith over from Next Best Picture and in Session Film, and we also have Sharia Chawa, YouTuber himself. It's in the name. And today, we're here to continue our franchise revisited series with the Hunger Games Catching Fire, which released in 2013. And I believe that is the last time that I actually saw this movie was in theaters. And um, a little bit of housekeeping here before we begin today's episode. Uh, before we begin today's, you know, celebration shenanigans, you can listen to our podcasts on platforms around the internet. And if you are a new or seasoned listener to the show, we would love to hear from you guys. Show us some love and leave us a five-star rating and review if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Film Optics. That is Optics with an X. Or you can email us at filmoptics at gmail.com for any movie-related questions. So I'm going to start off by just introducing our guests here. You know, we have Sharia coming back on. Uh, he uh, helped us out with... Uh, talking some Harry Potter, and so did Amy as well. So we'll start with uh, Amy. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, actually. Yeah, um, this is the first time I've seen Catching Fire in quite a few years, so it's nice to sort of revisit and revisit a franchise that I loved as a teenager. Yeah, definitely. I, it's it's always been in the back of my mind. I'm like, oh yeah, I do own those. I'm like, why haven't I watched those in so in like forever? It, they, they were so good, but. Let's move over to Sharia. How are you doing today, man? I know you've been uh, busy over on the YouTube side. Yeah, I've been doing good. And yes, I have been busy on the YouTube side. Lots of stuff coming out right now. Uh, but yeah, doing pretty good. And I watched this for the first time since February 2014. Yep, that sounds right. So, wow. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, who has been a few years? But no, it's, it's all good, man. And of course, uh, my right hand man, Devin, how are you doing this fine Saturday morning? Doing, doing swell. Watched this yesterday for the first time since 2014 as well. And it was interesting. Was it 24? Wait, was it 2013 or 2014 it came out? I might have a misprint, but. I saw it on Blu-ray when it came out, which was 2013. Okay, so yeah, okay. 2013 for me then. Mm. Okay, I, just, I wanted to make sure I had that correct. I was like, well, I'm not sure if that's, I don't know. It might have been a misprint on my side. Mm. But yeah, as I said before, we're going to be diving in. This is the second installment of the Franchise Revisited series for The Hunger Games. You know, the uh, the 10-year uh, celebration of the first movie is coming up in March. So we figured, you know what, let's show some Hunger Games love out here. So um, are you guys all ready? We're about to just dive straight in and talk about everything with with the uh, with the seventy uh, fifth Hunger Games. You guys ready to dive back into that arena? <laughs> the odds be in our favor. <laughs> yep, let's do it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back after this introduction to Hunger Games catching fire. This is the seventy fifth year of the Hunger Games. The tributes are to be reaped from the existing pool of victors. I get to say goodbye. So what do we do? I think these games are going to be different. The 75th Hunger Games! Ready to work? There she is, Kansas 17! The girl on fire! I want you guys to forget everything you think you know about the games. Last year was child's play. This year, you're dealing with all experienced killers. Any last advice? Stay alive. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and we are back with our Hunger Games Catching Fire review. And the synopsis is as follows for those who also haven't seen this since its release. Katniss Everdeen and Peter Malark become targets of the Capitol after their victory of the 74th Hunger Games sparks a rebellion in the districts of Panem. Uh, this is directed by Francis Lawrence. Uh, is, uh, the writing credits go to uh, shot, uh, excuse me, 
Simon Befoy, uh, Michael Arnitz, and of course, Susan Collins, who is the writer of this uh, amazing franchise and of course stars Liam Hensworth, Jennifer Lawrence, Joss Hutcherson, and many, many more. I believe we have a, a, a Lenny Kravitz coming back for this one as well, which I totally forgot. I was like, I couldn't remember how many of these he was in, but now we know. <laughs> now we know for sure. I was like, oh yeah, that did. I remember that scene for sure. But so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go around to our guests here um, so they can talk about their introduction into this franchise. And then we'll get into our initial thoughts of a rewatch and then kind of go into final thoughts, ratings, so on and so forth. So I'll start with Sharia. Um, what is your connection with this franchise? And have you, did you read the books prior, much like you did for Harry Potter? So um, this was late uh, for me. So I think they announced the first movie and then I thought, let me get some introduction. Let me see what it's all about. And then I, I picked up the first book and uh, I've confession. I've only read the first book. Um, and uh, I just went into the first movie as a, as a result of that. And yeah, it's a very brief introduction, honestly. Then after that, I saw the first movie, and then I thought, hey, let's see what the sequels have in store, and here we are. <laughs> he <laughs> was like, this seems pretty cool. I guess I'll be along for the ride. <laughs> yeah, it seems fun. No, I, I feel it, man. It's, also, you know, it's... No, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, also, um, the reason I, I remember, I think I didn't read, I was a very impressionable person at that time, and someone told me, a big fan of the books told me, don't read the next two books because they didn't like the other two books and i was like okay but i should probably do that someday <laughs> <laughs> it's like this one kid you know just told me not to continue reading so i did <laughs> honestly it's happened to me way way too many times mm -hmm. um i've done that with a few of my friends myself <laughs> so let's move over to amy uh what is your history with the franchise yeah so i think it's important to note i was a 13 year old teenage girl when the books well when the books to film first started really popularizing so i am somebody that was very much i hate twilight i love harry potter i was like okay i'm not sure what i'm gonna think of the hunger games but the hunger games is really a book series that sort of re-sparked my love for reading after harry potter when i was a kid so after that i really got into like the maze runner divergent you know all of these teenage dystopian trilogy series so I became really attached to these stories and I'd still say out of that sort of era, The Hunger Games is the best series like mm -hmm. of that mm -hmm. sort of run. And I think Catching Fire, both the book and the film are the best of the trilogy. So yeah, so I'm, I'm revisiting it. I was impressed at the crafts of this this is not just your typical dystopia teen flick this has a lot of technical artistry to it but i was kind mm. of taken aback from from a rewatch so yeah very excited to talk about this okay yeah yeah definitely um so i guess we'll move over to devin um i know De devin's a huge reader for everyone out there listening he, yeah he can't get enough he's got stacks and stacks his own study and his own apartment can't get enough of his books but, Devin, what is your uh, relationship and introduction to The Hunger Games? Well, we did go over this in our first uh, episode of this series. but That is true. But for new listeners. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. Um, no, yeah I just kind of watched them as they came out because I kept hearing great things about the books and the movie. And I haven't watched them since, but it's been good to catch up. Yeah, definitely. Catch? catch? Uh, yeah. Catch up? Catch <laughs> Catching fire? fire? <laughs> um for me it's it's pretty much the same as Devin you know it you know as we spoke about like on the the um the past of our at least our first coverage of of the Hunger Games a few well actually last month now um it's um uh, it's been I just never I never read the books for whatever reason but of course you know during that time you know like I said before we we're kind of coming off of Harry Potter and then you know we had Twilight all these book adaptations and it was kind of just the thing to do but going back and revisiting catching fire it, it's like man like storytelling like this rarely happens anymore where you know it is this big franchise but you know it's serialized and it's like oh my gosh what's going to happen next it's like i feel like we really haven't had that in a while um maybe hopefully we'll get it with dune i'm starting to feel that way with with the new dune but for me you know unfortunately i never read the books i would like to because i am a big 
young adult um, fantasy type person. I usually gravitate towards that genre when it comes to literature. Um, so hopefully, I mean, this, I mean, me rewatching these has definitely sparked me to kind of read, like actually read the books for the first time. Cause I would very much like to, because I, it, it blows my mind when I was watching this. I'm like, I forgot how good this series was. And it's like, no one's been talking about it forever. And, you know, since it is the 10th, uh, year anniversary celebration coming up in March, it just seemed like a really great time to kind of, you know, talk about that. So that's pretty much my, I guess, introduction to Catching Fire, you know, it's just, I never really liked reading books what people told me to read. Like I wanted to go out of my way and found what was interesting to me, but let's get into our initial rewatch thoughts here. I guess we'll start with Devin, then we'll go to Amy, then Amisharia. What were your initial thoughts about rewatching that, you know, give us your pros, your cons, just what, what's going on in that brain of yours, Devin? Yeah, it's, just, it's very refreshing to, to watch these again. I know we were talking in our Twitter group about how how much of a leap this one felt from the first one in quality wise. I definitely noticed that as well, especially in just visuals. It just feels like you got a bit more of a budget here to work with. And the story also uh, takes a leap as well. Just very, very entertaining throughout. I love seeing Philip Seymour Hoffman. It's sad that he uh, isn't with us any longer, but in that name, Plutarch Heavensby. What a name. That's an all-timer. I want to know how Suzanne came up with these names because they're just, they're great. Hamish hey, Abernathy. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not every day you meet a man named Peter. And Caesar Flickerman. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even though oh, Flavius. <laughs> Effie Trinket. Abby, yeah, Abby, exactly. Effie Trinket's pretty easy. <laughs> Trinket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, for, for the world that it is, you know, there are these, it's outlandish in a way, but like, it kind of just makes sense. It's like, oh yeah, it has, it has a nice ring to it. But I've, I've always wanted to know the process of how um, authors often name their characters. Cause I mean, even with like Harry Potter, like obviously never heard of the word or the name Hermione a day in my life prior. And like my and sister, since. yeah, has, <laughs> that is true. But yeah, I mean, even my sister couldn't pronounce it. She would say her Heine. And I'm like, yeah, that, that, that's Hermione. Every single time. It was I'm like, she, she's trying. It's, it's all good. She's trying. She's trying. <laughs> but uh, let's move over to Amy here. Give us your initial rewatch um, of, the, of Catching Fire Hunger Games. I think what took me aback in this rewatch was how little time we actually get in the 75th games it's not until about what halfway at least halfway through until the games mm. actually begin it's much more focused on sort of the backlash that came from the decision for Katniss and Peter to both survive in the 74th games and you know as a 14 15 year old watching it for the first time I don't think you can truly sense the political aspects and the riots and how important these mm. darker themes are to this overall arcing story that you get throughout all the films. Um, so I think the balance that they had to still create an entertaining film with the games and the arena concept, but balancing it out with the themes that they have, that's what really elevates this film to another level as opposed to the original Hunger Games. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you there. It, it is a, it's, it's a shock for sure um, when, when it comes to just realizing what kind of world this is in. And obviously, you know, like you said, when we were younger watching this, it's we didn't pick up on certain political things. But obviously, you know, now that we're older, it's it's easy to pick up on those things. And also, I, I do agree with what you're saying with it. It does a really great balance of, you know, getting us into the uh, the quarter quell, which, you know, is a quote unquote wrinkle, of course. And then, you know, barely getting into the games and it kind of just. It, it, it is definitely the climax of this franchise. And that's why I love about it so much because there's so much going on. And like, even like on a first time watch or, you know, since it's been so long since we watched it, it's kind of like watching it again for the first time because I was shocked. I was like, oh my God, that's right. And it's like, things started to click. I'm like, okay, this is like setting up for everything, uh, everything to come. But let's move over to Sharia. What were your initial thoughts? So, Something that Amy brought up earlier was about how the, as far as YA series go, this was like the best one. And I want to like sort of build off on that because 
one of the things I really liked about Hunger Games, um, whether it like be the movies or in, even the first book, was how real it kind of felt. Like, yeah, of course, it's a dystopic and uh, you know future, but it's like you sort of see things now in present day, even, and you and you see the movies, and like you know, if you don't play the cards right in the in, in our modern society, this could happen, and it feels somewhat even more eerie as a result of it. So Catching Fire is, I feel like, right there is, like, the zenith of it, where it's, like, it felt, like, like especially on this rewatch, I thought this feels, it feels much more disturbing to watch at times because it just, it feels so tangible. It feels so, like, it, it feels real. And the the way it just brings in those political themes and, and topics and, I mean, well, it carries those forward and next installment too but i like the fact that it manages to address those and yet at the same time everybody i know who i watched the movie with was cheering away in the last hour of the movie during the games it's like that balance is hard to create and the fact that this film does it and it's such a big step from the first movie especially in visuals like no shaky cams or quick edits here this these play out these scenes it's pretty amazing actually (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah as soon as you mentioned shaky cams all i can think of is michael bay and that's like well michael bay that was kind of during the time where you know then the transformers movies were out like shaky cams were all their age back then because it's like yeah. oh it's chaotic you don't know what's going on and mm-hmm. but it, it it really is i i, I want to kind of build up what you guys are saying with just the story and you know the politics itself you know it, it really i i don't know how much time of a jump it is between the first and second movie when it comes to uh, to years, but um, I do know that Mockingjay pretty much happens right after Catching Fire. Mm-hmm. Like, I guess time, time wise, like, you know, the events start uh, kicking off there, but I really love how, like you guys were talking about the quality, like the first beginning shot, you know, it's just, it's just Katniss, like in the woods, you know, it's snowing out and it's just this beautiful, beautiful scenery. And they, they really play up everything within the film with, you know, um, President Snell, like threatening Katniss and her family and her friends when it comes to, you know, this, this big political stance that, you know, Peter and Katniss made in the first film. And, you know, it, it really sparks this huge revolution, uh, rebellion between all the districts. And of course, you know, we find out about district 13, which is no longer, existing so it's kind of it's kind of crazy to think about um but i really love for i guess for my industrial rewatch it was just i I love how the politics play into it you know we really don't see a lot of uh movies or shows these days that can kind of balance action with politics and not have it be as um disengaging because you know it can be always like the politics can be overbearing and I felt that way when I was watching like The Witcher season two. Like there was a lot of politics in that in that show where it, it just lost me. But within the Hunger Games, just especially with Catching Fire, you know, it is more streamlined. But you know, you really feel for these characters, and of course, you see, um, you know, Katniss and Peeta kind of going through their their win their tour, which is really weird to think about because it's. I mean, obviously, this world's already messed up enough as it is yeah it's but, like it's like we killed your people and now we're here to tell you it was good and yeah you liked it <laughs> i i gotta say um when it asked everyone what their favorite scene was from the movie um i guess i'll, I'll save mine for last but i guess Devin, do you have a favorite scene after you know your initial rewatch um i think it's just gotta be the end where she she kind of just sees everything <laughs> unfold and she's just <laughs> blindsided <laughs> It, good old, good old Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah, I forgot. There, there's so many people in this film that I forgot were like actually a part of like this entire franchise. Uh, we get Thad Castle, of course. Uh, yeah. Or, <laughs> uh, or people may know him as uh, um, Hawk from Hawk and Dove when it comes to uh, <laughs> DC or the, fan. The new Reacher. Yeah, Reacher yeah, right. as well. I, I hear it's pretty good. I, I hear it's phenomenal. But yeah, a lot of great. Um, star power within this entire film but well yeah, so i also looked it up and this this one had a budget about 50 million dollars higher than the original oh did it so that okay. might be where those those visual improvements come in 
Oh uh, yeah, it it really did seem like a step up just from I don't know, like all of the the effects from the actual arena being like this huge clock type situation and I don't know, there's something very not magical but uh authentic about this world. There aren't any any gray dogs running around. Gray blobs. <laughs> Oh my God, De- Devin didn't, was not a fan of the uh, the CGI of the the gray dogs in, in the first film, but hey, it is what it is. Like it's it's totally fine. Uh, but we'll move over to Amy here. Um, I kind of want to open up the floor for Sharia and Amy to kind of talk about anything you know what they wanted to bring up within this um, within this rewatch. So we'll start with Amy and go to Sharia, and we'll kind of just go from there. Yeah. So my favorite scene, not because of what happens in it, but the way it is done is the scene where Katniss is about to go into the sort of containment and head up into the games. Um, firstly, I don't want to, can we spoil? What, what's the rule on spoilers here? Oh yeah. So for, for everyone listening and of course for everyone on the show, this is spoiler city. So you can talk about whatever you want. Okay, so the scene where we sort of presume Sinna is murdered for his actions for creating the Mockingjay dress. Um, not only was that really well done, the fact that Katniss is already sort of in the container, she's just freaking, it freaks her out before she's even in the arena. It's the aspect ratio change that got me from when you're down there to head into the game, you see it's stretching out you're like oh that is so good that was when i was like they're really paying attention to the craft of this this is not just telling up like a, a story they're really focusing on the filmmaking and yeah that that called me off guard the first time i watched it in the cinema um i think i knew it was coming the second time around but i was still like wow the yeah. fact that you really get to see this arena opened up kind of like Katniss does for the first time. It really puts you in her eyes and seeing what just happened to Sinna as well. You're like, yeah, no wonder why she's freaking out right now. Yeah. It, that, that was a very, very powerful scene because it, it happened so abruptly. And, you know, when Katniss and Sinna essentially say their goodbyes mm. and it's just, and this is also coming off of everything that Katniss, like she's still, battling with like ptsd like you kind of see during the beginning of the film Mm -hmm. where she um i think she was trying to uh i think it was a turkey or uh a flock Mm -hmm. of birds and you know she kind of goes into that i think that was jack quay that they kind of snuck in there yeah it was was... (laughs) smart smart (laughs) so sneaky trust him (laughs) (laughs) it's like if you look closely at his filmography he's in every major franchise (laughs) somewhere (laughs) lurking he's there (laughs) But um, I, I do agree with you, Amy. What, uh, it's you know all the trauma, and then you know her figuring out that she has to go back, and just the I mean, obviously the scene with like Rue's family was mm-hmm. like absolutely heartbreaking. But I really love how, of course, you know when they're drawing everyone's names, and you know Katniss kind of wants to promise to um, um, you know to make sure that Peta survives. And, you know, with Hamage and whatnot, their whole promise. And then it's like, oh, you know, we're going to take, you know, the winners of, you know, it's it's like the champion of champions type game. And mm. obviously when they're pulling Candace's name out of the ball, it's like, it's like, do, do we even need to do this? Like, this is, this is too much. This is too much. <laughs> and the, the tear dropping down her face and just knowing that she has to go back into it. And then obviously leading up to Senna's death, like, as soon as the game start and she doesn't have time to mourn she kind of just has to you know focus on surviving and using that um that sorrow and that loss to um you know just kind of make sure that her and peter survive and i really like how also um the whole ally situation Mm. that was happening as well but i do i'm going on a rant here sharia i'm going to pass it over to you i'm i just love this movie so so much i'll pass it over to sharia you know <laughs> what was your favorite scene and anything you wanted to piggyback on uh so amy took my answer let's go with my second favorite <laughs> scene um, <laughs> so uh, let's let's go with the second one um so yeah the okay um so the scene just uh when she's um when she's showcasing her skills to um mm-hmm. to heavens being everyone and it's like hey you got a few minutes to do this and she sees the painting mural of what i guess is uh, rue on the ground 
Mm. And uh, in anger, she makes that uh, <laughs> hanging doll of Seneca <laughs> Crane. I remember I saw that for the first time with a bunch of my friends. And we were like, oh, <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's such a great moment in the movie. And re- beautifully executed because you're kind of like, what is she doing? Shouldn't she be showing off her archery skills? <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then you see this. And I love that little moment when it cuts to Heavensby and he's just like, hmm. Smiling away, it. <laughs> I was like, he get he gets it. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> so that was it. Um, and it, and and then, well, one other tiny bit later on. I love the dress reveal, the one where she twirls. I was like, wow, that's very nice, very nice, very black swan like. <laughs> kind of impressive. yeah. It, the symbolism in this movie is very. It's so on point. Like Amy said, you know, they really paid attention to not only the story, but, you know, the craft of how things unfold and Mm -hmm. how things appear on screen to give everyone like a sense of, so they understand what's going on and how serious this, um, you know, this dystopian world is when it comes to a lot of the, um, just, just the politics. And I, I absolutely love how, um, much like in the first movie, you know, since this one also is rated uh, PG 13, a little bit more, I guess violence in a way or like off killing screens. Cause we kind of see, you know, after when Rue goes to uh Rue's district, I think it's district 10, 11 or is it 10? 11. 11. Yes. Yeah, right. She was the next dis- district over. And then the old guy, you know, does the whistle and the, the, the peace sign. I call it the boy scout because that's literally <laughs> what the boy scout symbol is. <laughs> Be prepared. We are prepared. Um, and then we, we kind of see a, you know, a civilian of district 11 being shot, like just briefly as the doors are closing. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's as close as we've ever gotten to seeing like an on-screen death, but they, that was, that was Rue's, uh, father or were they related? I don't think that was Rue's father. I think it was just, uh, just a, a, uh, a person who Mm -hmm. was a part of, you know, or, or, you know, knew Rue's family, but. Um, that, that scene was just, uh, it gave me goosebumps. I, I love how she kind of just kind of, kind of, you know, she doesn't want to talk during, you know, Rue's, uh, part of the tour. Cause it's like, I mean, why would you, what would you have to say? Mm-hmm. And then she kind of just, you know, makes it up on the fly and she kind of just speaks from the heart. And it just, mm-hmm. it's, it's a very powerful dialogue scene where, you know, you can, you can feel the tension, the sorrow, the anger, the loss, and then, um, just going into, everything else where you know we, i guess what my point is i love how you know even though we don't see as much of like the rebellion from the, the other districts we kind of sort of see it even towards the end of the film where you know we don't see what's going on in district 12 and but we know all this is happening but i feel like that's on purpose because you're so focused you know it is told from katniss's point of, of view so why would you you know know about the outside going on you know she kind of gets thrown thrown into this game like amy said you know around the halfway mark of the of the film which i think it runs about two hours and 20 ish minutes Mm -hmm. but you know the games just end so abruptly and then you know you find out district 12 has been destroyed and it kind of just it's so chaotic within that it's like hey like how is this going to end and then you know she shoots like a lightning arrow at the sky and just (laughs) A very, you know, big F you to the Capitol. <laughs> staring, staring right down, right at their souls. It's it's crazy because Catching Fire, like, it is more of the same of the first movie. Like, you know, the trackers, like, you're very familiar with the, how the process goes. But it still manages to change things up in a very, very interesting way. So that's the, <laughs> that's my rant. I do apologize. <laughs> I wanted to open up the floor for you guys. Was there anything you wanted to mention that we haven't gotten to thus far? Or was there anything about the movie that didn't really click for you? I guess we'll start with um, Sharia, then we'll go to Amy, and then uh, Devin. Nothing in particular that I can think of that didn't click for me, really. Uh, because, like I said, like some of the things that I had, like I guess, qualms with in the first movie were mostly technical. And um, I, and one thing that I did um, want more of after the first one was a little more of the the commentary because I thought that was very fascinating and I, and I was like I want to explore some of that too so I'm glad that this one does and um, 
Kristen, I know you haven't seen Mockingjay yet, so I'm not going to spoil I'm it. I'm sorry. You. Yeah, it's yeah. so. It, uh, I don't know how. Like, because right, I was man. so invested into this franchise, and I was like, "Oh man, I can't wait for the next one." And you and missed then, the ending. <laughs> <laughs> I missed the next two, um, and I don't know what happened. I I don't know if like life got in the way. I couldn't. I can't even tell you right. what happened during that time frame because. I don't know because like when I went went to rewatch like the screen movies, I was like, I can't remember if I've seen at least like two or three or maybe even four. And then mm. as I was watching, I'm like, oh yeah, I have seen these, but it's been so long. Mm. So maybe they're just like you know locked in the back of my mind, and it's just it's been that long. So I'm like, I, right now I want to say yeah, like I haven't seen it because I'm like eighty percent sure I haven't seen <laughs> part one or part two. Mm. And I do apologize. I know it's um, well, but you know you can talk about it in a spoiler free way <laughs> yeah no uh, no not a problem uh, i was just basically going to say that um that the thing that i wanted to see more of like when you get to mocking j part one especially again no spoilers you get a lot of that that's it's mainly about the political side of things and i and what i but i mean we'll talk but that's for your next episode with someone else um so <laughs> regarding this don't break movie, embargo no i'm kidding yeah, i'm sorry um, <laughs> but, lionsgate but, is listening <laughs> yeah. i actually know the pr person at lionsgate should kill me for this if i still boiled it um but uh uh but yeah in um in a, in a sense like what i also kind of what I like about this movie also is that there no one's on their bullshit where, where it's like, what was like snow immediately is like, yeah, it was an act. Come on. You guys are not a thing. And not a single point in this movie is anyone like, I mean, unless you're Caesar Flickerman, you're not falling for this. And, and yeah. everyone knows it's like, <laughs> clearly you're just doing this to survive and all right, respect that, you know, and all that stuff. But what I always found interesting about Katniss in, especially in these two movies, is like, she doesn't want to be a symbol. She doesn't, she's like, Hey, listen, I don't know why people are having these revolutions and all that, <laughs> like with my name, because that's not my intent at all. And they're like, listen, by the end of this movie, when you get there, it's like, listen, Katniss, you're a part of this. Why can I not? You you sparked this. And, yeah. you know, you're you're in this now. So and the truth of the matter is that you you want to see these guys fall just as much as anyone else does. And I think just sort of that sort of that arc of hers more so than the you know survival arc that she has with the games that arc to realizing like this is what you need to do like mm. you know that kind of hero's arc the other one i thought was really really well handled so yeah sure i i do agree with you there and it's also like what hamage said um when it came to Peta and katniss like you know this you know it's not just hey like you won you know you 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 survive the reaping like you've won but like you never get off this train because you you are now and forever like a, essentially like you know um an extension of the capital in a way because you know you you did survive um you know your your uh, that year's hunger games so it's it really shows the crazy wild ride how these uh what these characters go through and even with Peta, you know he i mean i I've, I've always liked i like Peta as a character um definitely has a little bit more depth in this uh film versus the other it was but i got to say i really love his um like i don't know the way when he gets up on stage and kind of just like wows the audience he's like oh yeah you know you know we you know the quarter quill is coming up me and kind of were supposed to get married and he's like fine whatever let's just get married it doesn't even matter like he, you know oh, he, such he knows happy. how to play the game he, he knows how to play the he, he pulled the baby card he was like <laughs> i have one more card up my sleeve <laughs> Katniss is pregnant. I mean, I imagine him on like on The Bachelorette or something in our <laughs> our universe. He's so sneaky. Like I love these small little like you know hidden like you know reverse Uno cards that he just has like in his back pocket, and you know he really causes more of an uproar after you know Katniss and Peta have like quote unquote tried to you know keep the ruse going, but even Hamish says you know it. Sounds like, you know, when you're on this tour, you sound very robotic and it doesn't sound real, you know, stick to the cards, as Effie would say. But I, I really love how, you know, Peter kind of comes into his own and I feel like he does a lot more. He's not just, you know, paying himself like a, like a bark tree and like hiding the entire time. That's so great. <laughs> 
<laughs> I still can't get over that. That was so, so funny. Oh my gosh. Well, I'll turn it over to Amy. Was there anything else you wanted to touch on? Any likes, dislikes that you had about the film? Yeah, I wanted to touch on the tributes that we see because in the original Hunger Games, you kind of only get to connect with Rue. And in this one, you have a lot more eclectic. And I know it's because it's the 75th Games are all returning, so we get a little more information. But they managed to make characters such as Finnick, who on surface should just be like this sort of hunk, the one that everyone adores, the one that everyone wants to save. And they still gave him sort of a fleshed out background of Annie and the whole, what was it, the Jabber Jays that were repeating her name and he goes yeah. yeah, they wouldn't be able to do those sounds unless they heard it, so they are tor- not only adding to a politics but also just adding to a characterization. Joanna, that that elevator scene, great introduction <laughs> to a character, <laughs> loved it. And then even of like Mags and uh, BT and Wireless, you just fall in, and it the problem is you fall in love with these characters and at the time we're thinking, oh God, only one survives. And mm. we obviously want it to be Katniss or Peter. So what the hell happened to these characters? It's really interesting how half of the tributes, like you said, we do get to focus more on the other tributes this time around because in the first film, you know, we Kano a little bit, kind eh. of. Like <laughs> not really. But, <laughs> yeah, not 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 as much. You know, it, it really was about, you know, Peta and Katniss, but I really like how we do get to connect with these other characters much like in game of thrones you know there's so many other moving parts but like you can't get too attached to characters in game of thrones no matter how much you know you you connect with them and with with the other tributes for catching fire i and of course jeffrey wright is in (laughs) this movie Mm -hmm. as well i forgot about that exactly so i'm talking about stars popping all over the place it's like how have we not like paid this much like respect and gratitude towards the Hunger Games? Because my God, just just, just wait even till like you the see small... who shows up in the next two movies, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> if it's Peter Dinklage, I'm gonna freak out. No, because <laughs> I freaked out during Avengers Endgame. I was like, I mean, uh, Infinity War. I was like, oh my God. Oh my God, it's him. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I really like how, you know, even with Jeffrey Wright's character, he was more of the, uh, the tech survivor. And it's, you know, may not be the, uh, the strongest man out there, but smart as a whip, 100%. Mm-hmm. And you, you really feel for these other tributes, you know, because it, it does suck knowing that, yeah, like somewhere, something somewhere, people are going to die. But with this... Mm-hmm movie we don't really know who survives even with Peter. um you know he's mia because you know the, the big explosion kind of happens and then that kind of just the movie kind of just ends and that's what i like you know this this huge climax and it's like oh my gosh like literally it anything can happen it's it's more of just this chaotic state in which this movie leaves you craving for more so it's it's very uh i it's i just think it's very very well done it's i i really wish you know like amy had said before with the craft of the the visuals we don't really see a lot of that in today's like big major franchise it's kind of just like you know maybe a few like super cool cuts here and there um aside from dune i think dune did a did a pretty good job attention to detail for that but it's it's been forever but uh i'll pass it over to Devin. Is there anything you wanted to touch on uh before we close out here i just wanted to mention a bit of a fun fact here we have the first ever tiktok addict in this uh oh god in this movie here <laughs> Devin, reporting <laughs> reporting the facts <laughs> she, she knew before anyone else ever knew <laughs> so so who, who is this this tiktoker tiktok there we go the tiktok tiktok mouse goes around. <laughs> she's a genius you're a genius you're a genius <laughs> the world's first tiktok <laughs> i was like wait that's, that's why that's why the world goes dystopian yeah <laughs> that's why it all happened <laughs> it started a tiktok we were three and seconds as- off i would have spit this coffee <laughs> <laughs> that is great that's that's just good yeah um I, I don't i don't know who the um who that actress was but i thought amanda Plummer. you may know her from pulp fiction honey bunny oh my gosh yeah yeah it's been a while since i've seen that as well Annie, have you um, 
off. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I was, I'm not, I was not going to say the F word because I was like, what if this is like a child friendly podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I try. I try. I try my best. I'm. I'm trying to figure out a way to like. I mean. We we are like you know we we try our best not to cuss mm-hmm. as much and it's which is totally fine it's you know if someone slips up once it's, it's whatever but you know I, I also um I also just want to throw in my appreciation for Jennifer Lawrence just mm-hmm. killing it even more so than the original just mm-hmm. she she's a like you know how you get like the ug- ugly criers like Tobey Maguire and like a lot <laughs> like there are just some people who just have a very ugly ugly cry but. When when Jennifer Lawrence gets into like you know when she really pushes herself with these you know emotional uh, scenes, it's um it's just, it's very authentic and you know it's it's it was like her first big break, so it's I don't know now she's yeah. in Don't Look Up. I mean, I hope we see her again soon. It's it's been a while since we. She had a kid. She's been uh oh yeah, hanging right. out. Yeah, that's true. Motherhood, you know, never stops. You know, it's- Worth noting that this was her first performance after her Oscar, which uh, she oh, got. That's for right. It was. Yeah. But she was. She was on top of the world there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, she got I another mean, nomination the next month for American Hustle. So she was. That's killing right. It. That's right. Yeah, I I believe she's originally from Kentucky. Last yeah, time she I is. Checked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's always just fun to kind of you know see where you know these stars like grew up and like what state they're mm-hmm. from because you never know. But I'm like, oh, Kentucky, huh? Ne- never would have guessed. Mm-hmm. One of, it's just one of those states that's kind of just there. It's like North and South Dakota. Like we know mm-hmm. they're there. We don't know what's going on, but they're there. <laughs> 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 they are there. But um, yeah, so let's just get into our um, our closing thoughts. I didn't want to take up too much of your guys' time today, um, just because you know it's. It's the weekend and you know we, we all have uh, prior obligations to get to. So let's get into our, our final thoughts slash ratings. I'll start with Sharia, then we'll go to um, Amy, and then we'll end with Devin. Uh, well, so it's all been said. I think this is one of the better sequels, honestly, of the past decade. I just think this is such a such a great movie. And again, re-watching it, I like it more now that I've re-watched it. I think it's the acting is pretty much all around amazing. I thought something I want to note is that I really liked um, Donald Sutherland in this a lot. Mm, I thought he oh, was, yeah, was super great. menacing, and and I, I think I took him more seriously as a threat compared to the first movie. I thought they really fleshed him out over here. Um, I love Jenna Malone, and I I keep advocating every time I see Jenna Malone in something for more Jenna Malone in something. So um, you know, I, I uh, thanks Zack Snyder for that because he's keeping her career alive for stuff. For the moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, praise you know. Um, yeah, it's it's the direction's awesome, great music. I like the song, the Coldplay song. I'm not gonna lie to you. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a big Coldplay person, but I do mm-hmm. like that song. Yeah, it's for a sure. beautiful song. Yeah, and yeah. Um, that was great. I love the one. One last thing I'll say about the visuals: the IMAX when it changes. Something that movies do sometimes is they keep changing the ratio throughout scenes. Sometimes because yeah. it's like we shot some of this with IMAX, some of it with like normal, like the Dark Knight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And mm-hmm. this case, they start off with IMAX when it transitions into when she gets up there. And then it stays that throughout for every scene until it's over. That's yeah. an hour constant of IMAX. I was like, that's that's good. I'm glad that they 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 did that. Um, yeah, but something yeah. the Dune Blu-ray did not give us, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'm still upset about that. Oh God, I'm so salty. I'm so salty. Oh, but man, sorry, but go ahead. Continue. It's okay. No, yeah, no, just that's pretty much it. Like, yeah, it's a great movie, and uh, I'm glad that. You know, uh, people, whether it be this podcast or whether it be something else, I'm glad that it's starting to get a little more, uh, you know, re reevaluation, more appreciation. Um, because I always yeah. thought this was, like, like you said in the beginning, it's like not a lot of people talk about this. And it's, it's For so some strange. Reason. <laughs> I know. It is and- weird. Yeah, and this is like the best of those YA adaptations, like all of the Maze Runners and the Divergence and the yada, yada, yada. But like, so yeah, um, hopefully more people will talk about it now. All right. Uh, Amy, let's move over to you. Yeah, I think a big reason why people don't talk about it now is because it just got bad. Like the Divergent films. The first one was okay, but then second one was a train wreck. Maze Runner kind of fizzled out. And then what? You had 
the Tom Holland Daisy Ridley movie from last year that tried to bring back the <laughs> franchise, and that was a complete disaster as well. Yeah, so, was that one that came out on Disney Plus that was I Chaos can't Walking? Remember. Chaos, Chaos Walking, Walk. that's it. Yeah, yeah. But the book is almost unadaptable anyway, so I don't know why they even tried to attempt that. Um, so I think The Hunger Games just got a bad rap of just being clumped into the young adult dystopia franchise where people are like, oh, it's just for teenage girls. No, I think if you go back and rewatch these films, you'll find a lot in there that also resonates with today's society where we are right now. And yeah, like mm-hmm. if you're hesitant to go back into this franchise, which I could see why, I'd still say it's definitely worth it, especially for the sequel. Because yeah, like you've all said, this is probably one of the best sequels we've had in the past decade. Bar from maybe Winter Soldier. Yeah, yeah, Winter Soldier was really, really good. That 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 was a game changer because when I saw First Avenger, I was like, I'm not sure if I like Captain America all that much. <laughs> and then I saw Winter Soldier, I was like, Oh, okay, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, it, it's very rare, like you said, that we get sequels that essentially outperform the original. So it's th- th- I I definitely feel like th- this deserves to be a part part of that list 100 percent um so devin let's move on to you give your uh final thoughts and well i'll give mine and we'll close on out of here yeah i think we're all in agreements here it's just a great movie a great sequel definitely a, a big step up for the franchise we'll see what unfolds moving forward christian will be in for some surprises <laughs> Does not go the way I, I, I want to start it now but like i want to wait until next month because i'm trying to like pace myself because i wanted to start catching fire right after i watched the hungers like no 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 like let's 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 take a breath and you know soak it in and i'm I'm trying to you know i, I don't want to binge this franchise mm-hmm. you know what i mean it's very i want to i want to take it all in i want to appreciate it for what it is mm-hmm. i don't want to just like rush through it and give like you know my final thoughts i gotta i gotta marinate in it so i'm like mm-hmm. i can't wait to see what happens next it's taunt to me though it's on my shelf but I will not give in to temptation. <laughs> but Devin, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. Yes, yeah, it's just kind of crazy how this movie and this series has just kind of stood the test of time, especially with all these other attempts at YA adap- adaptations, like <laughs> compared to like Percy Jackson or Ugh. Artemis Fowl. Like, there's just so many. I'm so awful. glad we're getting another attempt at Percy Jackson because that series deserves a good adaptation. Yeah, mm. Artemis yeah. Fowl one scarred me for life. So, and this was my. Oh, you watched I'm, it? I'm, I'm glad yeah. I never saw the that. Artemis one. Fowl movie. The movie was terrible, but and it's, I'm a huge, huge fan of those books. I hope they give that a second chance someday. But I'm so sorry I cut everyone off. <laughs> no, you know you're. I I haven't. I want. I everyone's telling me not to see Artemis Fowl, but I'm the kind of person I'm like. Well, I kind of want to see it now to no, see how bad no, it is. No. <laughs> Please do not do that. The books are amazing. Please read the books. Like they they fleshed out such a great world, and the movies like <laughs> that's the I guy who got nominated for trailer. best. Yeah, that's the guy who got nominated yeah. for best director just now. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll, um, we'll, we'll see. Uh, Devin, were, were you all all good to go? Do you have anything else? Yeah, I think that's about it. Just shout out Jennifer Lawrence. I, I, I can always use some more Jennifer Lawrence in my life, honestly. I'm, I'm not complaining, like, at all. I mean, one of my biggest celebrity crushes, like, for the longest time. But, yeah, so for my uh, my uh, final thoughts, you know, it kind of aligns with everyone else's. You know, I, I'm I'm really glad that we are covering this series because it's, it's just it's just so good and there's so like there's there's a lot of fans out there i mean the uh, the steel bucks are supposed to be dropping i believe uh on the anniversary which i mean whew, thank god i got through best buy because i was very nervous after what happened with dune sorry i'm so waiting for that in the mail by the way the price has gone up to 10 million <laughs> i give him my address he's supposed to he's supposed to send me not the dune movie i just want the steelbook case we're gonna swap he now. offered me we'll five work. million dollars i want 10 now uh, <laughs> <laughs> so well, well i mean well. you guys could could go on uh and hunger games and fight for it <laughs> <laughs> that would be what's, a the, what's the skill you're taking with you uh whew. I, I i got nothing <laughs> nunchucks nunchucks maybe um I got a I I got a guitar I never really use to play anymore. I think that can do some damage. 
Yeah. <laughs> Use it as like a little axe or something. I don't know. Carve it out. But yeah, um, it's, you know, for, for young adult fantasy, I, I really hope we kind of, I, I hope Hollywood and just in general, like all these studios realize how important these, these, um, you know, these stories are and not only, you know, they're, they're really big coming of age films or in, in whether it be like adapt into a series or a movie. And it's, I mean, that's also one of my favorite genres out there. So it's, it's, there's just a lot of magic um, when it comes to adapting books like this. I don't know if we'll ever see a series. I thought they were in talks of like doing a hunger game series like a while ago, but I feel like that doesn't really mean much because we're now just getting a movie with the rock playing as black Adam and, how many years ago did they announce that? Like I was like, like 15 a child. years ago. <laughs> there you go. I was like a kid. I was like, this still hasn't come out. Like, wow, this has literally been put on the bookshelf for a long, long time. But um, overall, you know, it's it's just a great film for catching fire. And I'm I'm excited. Like I oh, I really just want to watch part part one of Mike and Jay right now. I I, I might I might have to break that promise <laughs> that I made to myself, but that pretty much concludes our um, coverage of Hunger Games: Catching Fire here on the podcast. I wanted to thank Amy and Sharia for coming on yet again. You guys are always welcome, friends of the show for sure. And I wanted to take this time so they can uh, let you know where they, um, you can find them on the internet. We'll start with Amy and then go to Sharia, and then we'll close on out. Yeah, so you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Films with Amy, and I'm mostly posting over at Next Best Picture and In Session Film right now. Okay, you got any uh, fun projects coming up that you're allowed to talk about, or um, just film festival coverage? I'm still catching up on Sundance, and then um, starting next month, I'm attending the Glasgow Film Festival, so that's what I'll be mainly Ooh. covering on top of award season, which. Ooh, it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> we're we're in the end game now. It's <laughs> we're almost there, almost there. Yeah, I mean, we we usually don't cover too much award stuff here, but um, it's I I do um I admire those that do because I would probably drive myself crazy if, if we ever did that. I, I I just don't know. Like I I don't understand the process as much. I don't pretend that I know the process. I just you know I'm I'm happy that you know people are getting rec- uh, recognition for uh. For for their work for sure. But we'll move over to Sharia. Where can everyone find you on the internet? So you can find me on Twitter and YouTube under this exact same name. That's me. And uh, you can also find me on Screen Rant, where I'm writing a bunch of articles. There should be one on Death of the Nile, which just released in theaters, coming very very soon. So that should be interesting. I that one. Yep. Uh, oh yeah, that movie came out finally in theaters. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, so yeah, after two and a half years of delays. Um, so. Yep. Uh, yeah, you guys can find me there. See what I write. See what I film and put on the internet. Okay. And you have uh, any uh, new content that you recently dropped? So uh, yeah, I just watched a couple of things. One was Death on the Nile. I just reviewed that. I also mm-hmm. watched uh, the cinematic masterpiece Moonfall, which was the greatest oh, movie yeah. I've ever seen in my so, life. So original, right? <laughs> greatest thing I have ever seen in my life. And when I said that somewhere, everyone was like, "He's trolling." I'm like, "I am not." trolling <laughs> this is i you have you have to see it um but yeah so that and this week's gonna be fun there's uncharted i'm also gonna be talking about some of the games because i want to i'm a huge fan and uh speaking of gaming horizon the new one so that yeah should be fun. that should be a lot of yeah. fun i'm <laughs> it's it's been a long time coming for horizon and i was like man i just i wanted to play the first game but i didn't want to get like fatigued by the time the second game came out so I'm mm-hmm. just going to play the second and then I might go back and play the first because I still haven't done like the Frozen Wilds DLC. Like to mm-hmm. this day, just haven't even tried to bring it up. But um, for everyone out there listening, um, you can find Amy and Sharia's information in the episode notes uh, down below um, to all of their work. And of course, here on the show, we have a lot coming up. We have our, our Uncharted review uh, dropping of course peacemaker season one will finally be wrapping up and then we have the batman <laughs> the <That's> batman <laughs> i'm so excited for that i it, it doesn't feel like it should be coming out because it still hasn't hit me i'm like i got my tickets so i'm like cool but it's it doesn't I, I don't know what it is like i feel like having like a big i mean this is like pro- possibly the 
well, I don't know if Uncharted would be a big, big blockbuster. We'll see. But um, <laughs> for the Batman, that's like truly like the biggest blockbuster we're uh, we're going to be getting to kind of kick off the uh, the 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 month of March. So it, it still hasn't hit me that it's coming out, but I'm I'm ready for it. So those are a few things that we have coming up on the podcast. We recently just finished our Jackass Forever review, which you can find up on the podcast as well as our Book of Boba Fett season one. And if you're a big, big sci-fi um, nerd, we recently just released our Raised by Wolves Season 2 uh, coverage. Uh, me and uh, Leo over from Geekly Goods kind of tackled the first six episodes, more of a non-spoiler uh, type format over there. So those are just a few things that are coming up or are actually already out on our podcast. So um, yeah, let's pretty much wrap on out here really quick before we do. want to let all the listeners know, please, please, please leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and or on Spotify. And remember to share this episode with a friend. Share it with your mother, your brother, your lover, whoever it may be. If you know someone who's a big movie buff, you know, hey, I, I got this awesome podcast called Film Optics. Super weird name, but they cover a lot of cool stuff. So definitely, definitely check us out and make sure to uh, share this episode with a friend in need. So I'm going to wrap a sound out of here. And again, thank you, Sharia and Amy, for coming back on. We'd love to have you guys come back on uh, to cover some more, however, whatever it may be. I know, I think JD Duran's coming on for part one of Mike and Jake's. Like, apparently, that's his favorite. So he said he wants to defend the movie. Again, I haven't seen it. I'm like, it can't be bad. Like, this, there's no way the story can like tank whatsoever. But we will see. <laughs> we will see for sure. So definitely, you know, uh, the next installment of our franchise revisit for the Hunger Games will be in March. So, you know, we're going to be doing that more on a monthly basis uh, just to kind of spread it out for you guys. Because um, like I said before, Harry Potter took a lot out of me. Same thing with The Matrix, um, especially The Matrix. <laughs> um, but <laughs> but whew, man, oh, man. Um, so let's wrap on out of here for today. And that's a wrap for today. Thank you all for listening. And if you enjoy the show, leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And follow us on Twitter to stay in the know. That was Devin, Amy, Sharia. My name is Christian. And we'll see you guys in the next one. And may the odds be ever in your favor.